Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I make our homemade dog food, and then I'll show you two super quick and easy homemade dog treat recipes. First, I want to introduce you to Happy and Pepper. Happy is on the left. He is a Yorkie Shih Tzu mix. He's about eight years old. We've had him for about five years. My mom found him on Facebook for us and uh, he was needing to be rehomed. His family was moving out of state and couldn't take him with them. Pepper is on the right. Pepper is a Chihuahua Karen Terrier mix. He's about five years old. He uh, was my grandfather's baby. If you're new to my channel, my grandpa loved this little guy so much and spoiled him rotten. And he just meant the world to my grandfather. And Paul passed away in February. Pepper went with my sister and um, he was with her for a few months. And then he came to us in June. My sister is moving. And so, um, you know, we just thought it'd be best for him um, to be with us until she got moved and got settled and everything. The plan is for her to take him back once she's settled, but I'm really hoping she reconsiders because we have fallen in love with him and uh, Happy has fallen in love with him as well. He is just, he's feisty. He's a little sassy. He's got the chihuahua in him, but he is such a sweetheart. And both he and Happy, they love to play, they love to snuggle, and they just have just very sweet little personalities. I have done a video before on how I make our homemade dog food. I will link that in the description box below for you. I wanted to do an updated version because one, I've had some requests for it, but two, I've made just a couple little tweaks to how I make their food. So quick backstory, the reason I started making uh, Happy's food, because we've had Happy longer, is because Happy has chronic pancreatitis and he also has kidney issues. And so as soon as we got him, you know, we of course started taking him to the vet on a very regular basis. He goes at least once a year, if not twice a year, up to date on it, all his shots. We do blood work, um, you know, he's, got his flea, heartworm, tick medicine, all that jazz. Pepper's the same way. Um, but we had spoken with our vet and we were making different uh, changes to his food and nothing was really helping. And so after talking with this vet, we decided to try homemade dog food. And I can say that since we've switched, um, Happy's only had a flare up once and it wasn't that severe, knock on wood. And that was because of a treat that he had been given, not his homemade dog food. Um, so it's helped him a lot. With that being said, I said this in that first video that I made, and you will hear me say it in today's video many times. Do not make changes to your pet's food unless you talk to your vet. Dogs have different dietary needs. Different dogs have different needs based on, you know, their particular health concerns or issues. So before you make any changes, talk to your vet. There are some foods that dogs just flat out cannot have. This is not a com comprehensive list by any means, but for example, they can't have like grapes or onions, um, things like that, chocolate. Uh, so again, talk to your vet um, and go by what your vet says. With that being said, in that first video that I did, I did have a few people leave comments saying like, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you should give your dog this. And I don't mean this to sound ugly. I mean, I know it's going to sound kind of rude when I say it, but it, it kind of is what it is. Please don't leave comments like that. No offense, but I'm not going to go by what people off the internet tell me versus what our vet who knows our dogs, who sees our dogs years after, you know, year after year after year, who does their exams, looks at their blood work. I'm going to trust what they say versus just trusting the internet. But that's me. Um, you know, if you want to go by Google, you do you boo, but I would highly recommend talk to your vet, do what your vet recommends. So with that being said, let me show you how I do the homemade dog food. All right. So here's what I'm going to use to make, um, the dog food for today. What I make really just changes kind of every time I make it. Um, and I use what's on sale. I use things that I've got left over, um, things that I need to use up. So every batch to dog food that I make looks a little bit different. Um, again, check with your vet, follow your vet's instructions. How I make our dog food may not be the way that you need to make uh, food for your doggos, depending on what their you know, dietary needs are. So 
for our boys. They have just a tiny little bit of weight to lose, not a lot. Um, so for us, we focus more on fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, and just a little, little, little bit of carbs, not a lot. So let me show you what I've got today. First up, I have some ground chicken. I've got some lean ground beef, and like I said, for my dogs, um, I'm using lean protein. So I've got the 93.7 um, ground beef for the vegetables. Do your research, find out, you know, there are certain vegetables that dogs just cannot have. There are things that they can have in moderation. Today, I'm gonna use some sweet potatoes, and I love using the frozen vegetables because, you know, they're already prepped for me, like the sweet potatoes. I don't have to peel and cut the potatoes. They're all ready for me. And they don't take very long at all to heat up. And then for the boys' fruit today, I'm gonna use sliced pears. Couple quick notes on your vegetables. If you're gonna use frozen or prepped veggies like I am, always check the ingredients. You'd be surprised sometimes what things are in here. So. Like this, it's just sweet potatoes, so that's good. Um, here, more the ingredients, peas and carrots, so we're good. The reason why I say you'd be surprised is for like canned fruit, dogs cannot have grapes. Grapes are poisonous to dogs. And I was surprised when I started buying fruit for the boys, how many um, canned fruits were canned in grape juice. So just keep an eye out for that. And you wanna make sure if you're getting canned fruit like I am, that you know, you're checking the ingredients, that it's in the juice, not syrup. Um, and again, that you're making sure that it's not grape juice. So I'm using some pears and then for the carbs this week, I have some brown rice. This is just a little bit left over from dinner one night. This is just brown rice uh, cooked in water, nothing added to it. Um, so that'll be good for them. So. That's what I'm gonna use. Let me show you how I'll put this together. I've got a large skillet over medium heat. I decided to add in some coconut oil. I don't do this every time I make their food. Um, I just do it every once in a while. Not a lot, just maybe a tablespoon or so. And then once that's melted, I'm gonna add in the ground chicken and the ground beef. Like I said, you can use different proteins. I've used um, chicken breast that I've diced up. I've used ground lamb, ground pork, ground veal. Um, every once in a while, if I can catch like chicken hearts or chicken livers on sale at the grocery store, I'll cut them up really small and like boil those. I also boil chicken breasts um, if I'm gonna cut those up. Um, you know, again, different proteins. I've also found like um, really thin, small cuts of steak before on sale, lean steak. Um, so yeah, just whatever you can find on sale, I, I use. So once that meat has been browned thoroughly and I really use my meat chopper and really, really chop it up. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a paranoid <laughs> dog mom. Um, but I'm worried the dogs will choke on it. And I even chop it finer now that we've got pepper cause he's just so little. So it worries me. Once the meat is all brown and chopped up, then I will add in the vegetables and the fruit and just cook that until the veggies are warmed all the way through and then that's it now i allow this to cool completely and then i package it up if you're making like a large batch of dog food or more than what they can eat in a few days which this is this will last them about a week i will put half of it in the freezer and then um you know when like i can see that it's like the last um scoops of food that I'm feeding them, I'll pull that out of the freezer and let it thaw. I have seen uh, recipes where like you can make a huge batch of dog food in your crock pot and freeze it. I haven't tried that yet. I want to, but if you've ever done that before, let me know how it, it turns out for you. I don't know. I, I, just, I guess I'm a little bit worried if the ground meat cooks all the way through in the crock pot. I don't see why it wouldn't, but um, like I said, if you've tried it, let me know. I'd love to give that a try. All right, so here's two other things that I use when preparing the dog's food. Excuse my dishes drying there. Okay, so first, our vet was explaining to me that when you buy like commercially made dog food that they add vitamins and minerals to it. And so when you're making homemade dog food, your dog's not always getting all of the vitamins and minerals they need. So she highly recommended that we use these. I get these, I've got them on Amazon, I've got them on Chewy. Uh, you can also get them from your vet. Um, and there's like instructions on here. 
based on weight. So I just go by this and I break it up, crumble it up into the dog's bowls. I do it in the morning and then I add their dog food. And then I like to add bone broth to it. Happy has kidney problems and he has uh, chronic pancreatitis and he's not really great about drinking a lot of water. Pepper's pretty good about it, but um, so that just worries me with Happy with his kidney problems. So I, gosh, maybe for a year now, I've started adding bone broth and he absolutely loves it. And I mean, it's not a substitute for water. He still drinks water, but um, this is just to kind of give him some extra liquid. You can, of course, make your own bone broth. You can buy it, but again, check your ingredients. I like this Brutus bone broth. I get this at Target. Um, I also get it on Amazon, and um, I get either the chicken or the beef. I think Amazon also has like a vegan. I can't remember, um, but anyway, so yeah, they really like it. Um, and then something that you can do with this bone broth is like put it in ice cube trays, freeze it, and it makes a really, really yummy little treat for them. So like I said, that's what I do. Um, I do the bone broth morning and their evening feeding, and this just once a day. Here are Happy and Pepper enjoying their homemade dog food. Now, I talked about the different proteins with the different fruits and vegetables. Again, making sure that, you know, they're things that are safe and, and okay for dogs. Uh, but try different fruits and vegetables with your dogs. Try them cooked. Try them raw. There are some veggies that the dogs love cooked. They won't touch them at all with a 10-foot pole if they are raw. Um, same thing with, you know, fruits. So, um, and they're just like people. They have little tastes and likes and dislikes. So, here here are um, Pepper and Happy. I wanted to show this. I think this is adorable. I've seen people call it a contentment ceremony, um, <laughs> but after they eat, if you have dogs, they they may do this as well, but they'll like rub on the carpet. It's so cute. Happy was in the middle of doing his little ceremony, and then Gary started talking to him, so he got distracted and stopped, um, but yeah, they are so cute. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple really, really quick and easy homemade dog treats to make. These are frozen watermelon treats. I'll have the recipe linked down below, but you really don't need a recipe to follow. They're just three ingredients. First up, you need some watermelon. Make sure they're seedless. Even with seedless watermelons though, as you can see in this one, there's still a couple of seeds. So make sure you pull those seeds out. We're gonna need some blueberries. You can use fresh or frozen. I've got some fresh on hand I need to use up, so I'm gonna do that. And then some yogurt. You can use Greek yogurt. Happy and Pepper really aren't a fan of it, I think probably because it's so tart, but they do like just plain yogurt. Like I've said, check the ingredients, make sure it's safe for your dog. Finally, you'll need an ice cube mold. I like using the silicone ones. I got this on Amazon. You don't have to use a cute little dog paw print like this. You can find ice cube molds, the silicone ones at Walmart. I've even seen them at the Dollar Tree. So I like to put the mold on a cookie sheet, just makes it easier to get in and out of the freezer. To the bottom of the mold, you're gonna add just a little bit of the yogurt. You don't need very much at all. You're just wanting to cover the bottom. And then once I've done that, I like to just give it a little zhuzh to make sure the um, yogurt covers the bottom. Next, we're gonna add in a couple blueberries. And how many you add really just depends on how big your molds are. I'm gonna press those down into the yogurt just a little bit and then set that to the side. Next, you're gonna to wanna to process your watermelon. So I'm using this little like Ninja individual smoothie maker. You could do a food processor if you prefer. And as I'm putting the watermelon in there, I'm just seeing if I can see any big seeds that I need to pull out. I'm just gonna process that or pulse that a couple times until it is liquefied. And then I like to drain it just to make sure there are no seeds in it. Once I've done that, I like to pour it into a measuring cup. Just makes it easier for me to pour into the molds. We're gonna fill up the molds and then that's pretty much it. You're gonna pop this into the freezer for about two to three hours until it's completely frozen. And then you wanna turn those out. Now you do wanna kinda of do this a little bit quickly. I've noticed that the watermelon tends to melt pretty fast, but look, aren't these so cute? Just store them in an airtight container in the freezer and that's it. Now with Happy, whenever I give him treats, he always takes it as you can see and then runs usually to his bed. <laughs> to eat it um, and he did that even before we got pepper and then with pepper with these little watermelon treats it's almost like pepper doesn't know what to do with it he'll just sit and lick it while I'm holding it until it's like a little nub and then he'll take it over to the carpet and finish it last but not least I tried a new recipe for apple cheddar dog biscuits so here are the ingredients I'm going to use first the recipe called for whole wheat flour which you can totally use but I'm going to use chickpea flour 
You need some oats, unsweetened applesauce, olive oil, shredded cheddar cheese. And whenever I'm making dog treats specifically, I prefer to shred the cheese myself just so that I'm, you know, they don't, they add additives in the pre-shredded stuff. And so I just prefer to shred it myself. And then the recipe calls for water, but I have this bone broth on hand. And so I'm going to use that figured it would give it a little extra flavor. All right. So the oven is preheating to 350 degrees. Y'all, this was, this took like five minutes to put together. It took no time at all. And I'll have the recipe linked down below. So we're gonna add the flour, and I did have the recipe, by the way. Once I've added the flour to a bowl, I'm gonna add in the oats and then the shredded cheese. I'm gonna add the applesauce, olive oil, bone broth, and then stir that until it forms a dough. And while I do that, just a quick funny on myself. So before we got happy, I was one of those people that looked at people who like made their own dog food and dog treats as extra. You know, I'm like, why do that? Just buy it from the store. But when we got happy and I kind of had to do it out of necessity, I realized it really isn't that hard and it really doesn't take that much effort. And I feel better knowing what's in it and knowing that it won't make him sick. So if you are like I used to be, just give it a try. A lot of these recipes really are simple. They use stuff that you've got on hand and you know, it doesn't take very much time at all. And it's great because you can make a batch and give them away to friends, family, neighbors, especially at Christmas time to people who have pets. So once I form these into a dough, now the recipe said like, you know, to flour your countertop, roll them out, cut them out, which you can totally do today. Just to be honest, I was feeling lazy. So I just dropped them into little, I did like half tablespoon sizes. I dropped them onto parchment paper and I popped them into the preheated 350 degree oven. And I baked these for about 15 minutes until they were golden brown and done all the way. Let them cool completely and then let your doggies enjoy them. Um, they can stay room temp for a few days, but you can also pop them into the freezer and they'll keep longer in the freezer. Look at these two little cuties enjoying their treats. Well, you can see Pepper anyway. As I said earlier, Happy took his and ran <laughs> like he always does. But even though I did a half tablespoon, it was still a little on the big side for Pepper, um, but it was soft enough to where he could break it into pieces. So no worries there. But um, the couple minutes that it took to put these together, totally worth it. They love their treats and they're good little boys. So they deserve them. <laughs> All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that if you have dogs that this gave you maybe a couple treat ideas to try or or maybe if you've been on the fence about making homemade dog food for your dog, um, maybe this is a little encouragement if you needed it. Or maybe if you felt overwhelmed by it, maybe this kind of helped you a little bit. But I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.